Welcome to Emergency Insights. I'm your host, Dr. James Carter. Today, we're covering a critical toxicologic emergency, cyanide poisoning. Joining us is Dr. Sarah Lin. Dr. Lin, thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Carter. It's a pleasure to be part of this important discussion. Let's begin with the basics. What exactly is cyanide poisoning? Cyanide poisoning occurs when cyanide enters the body and prevents cells from using oxygen. This essentially halts cellular respiration, leading to rapid cell death. How does cyanide affect the body at the cellular level? It binds to cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondria, disrupting the electron transport chain. This prevents cells from utilizing oxygen even when it's adequately delivered and leads to energy failure and cell death. What are the most common sources of cyanide exposure? Exposure can result from inhalation of smoke and structural fires, ingestion of cyanogenic compounds like certain seeds or industrial chemicals, and less commonly, skin contact. Industrial settings, mining, and chemical laboratories pose higher risks. What early symptoms should clinicians look for? Early signs include headache, dizziness, nausea, shortness of breath, and tachypnea. These are nonspecific but should raise suspicion in the right context. And what signs point to more severe poisoning? Severe cyanide toxicity can manifest as hypotension, bradyarrhythmias or tachyarrhythmias, seizures, loss of consciousness, and respiratory arrest. How quickly do these symptoms develop? Onset can be within seconds to minutes, particularly with inhalational exposure. It depends on the route, concentration, and duration of exposure. What is the immediate approach to treatment? The priority is to remove the patient from the exposure source, administer 100% oxygen, and initiate antidotal therapy as soon as possible. Speaking of antidotes, what agents are used? The primary agents include hydroxocobalamin, sodium thiosulfate, and sodium nitrite. These are often used in combination depending on the clinical situation. How does hydroxocobalamin work? It binds directly to cyanide to form cyanocobalamin, essentially vitamin B12, which is non-toxic and excreted in the urine. Beyond antidotes, what supportive care is essential? Airway protection, ventilatory support, circulatory stabilization, and seizure management are critical. Continuous monitoring is also essential due to rapid clinical deterioration. How is the diagnosis made, especially in urgent settings? It's primarily clinical, based on history and presenting symptoms. While blood cyanide levels can be measured, results are rarely available in time to guide immediate management. And finally, what does the prognosis look like? Prognosis depends heavily on dose and time to treatment. Rapid recognition and early antidote administration significantly improve outcomes. Dr. Lin, thank you for sharing your expertise on this vital emergency topic. Thank you, Dr. Carter. It's been a privilege to discuss this life-threatening condition and reinforce the importance of rapid intervention. That wraps up today's episode of Emergency Insights. Stay safe and stay informed.